Hey guys, it's Joe with PocketNow.com. Now, Android 4.0, Ice Cream Sandwich, hasn't been available for that long. And in fact, it's been available in the AOSP, that Android open source project, for even shorter than that. Now, the AOSP, for those of you who don't know, or those who want a reminder, is the open source repository where people, developers, you know, you or me, can go out, grab a copy of the source code of Android, and cook our own ROM for whatever device we want. We can put in our own bells and whistles and features, take anything out that we don't want. Really kind of a cool idea. One of the biggest ROM makers out there is CyanogenMod. Now, the CyanogenMod team puts together all kinds of different ROMs for all kinds of different hardware, but the one that they don't have yet is Ice Cream Sandwich. In a tweet from Cyanogen himself, he said that they had the code, they were starting work, and to check back in a couple months. Well, it hasn't been a couple months yet, but I'm interested to see what their progress is. I think you would be too. Let's go take a look. This is the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, specifically the GSM variety, which right now is running Android version 4.0.1, well, for everybody else. Some people have gotten a 4.0.2 update, but that's about it. 4.0.3 is available, but the update for the Nexus X was pulled while Google works on some things with battery life and, uh, and whatnot. So, right now on this device, I'm running Android 4.0.3 and CyanogenMod 9, a very, very early pre-release. Now, a couple things to note. Officially, the Galaxy Nexus is not a supported device. Not yet, anyway. It probably will be, in fact, it'll probably be the first device once CM9 is released. But, for now, we just have someone, in this case, Euroskank, what kind of a name is that, who's put together a, a custom ROM based on that, uh, and it's essentially just something that he compiled for the Galaxy Nexus. Now, let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, you're going to notice it looks just like everything else that you've seen before. Same launcher, same everything. Uh, it looks like what you'd expect. Same widget behavior, same app behavior. Uh, it's just the same thing. You'll notice that a little bit of the lag that some of you mentioned before is gone. Now, I run a widget-heavy five-screen device, so... That explains a little bit of the uh, the delay that some of you have mentioned in previous videos, but most of that is gone here. Also, folder heavy as well. But let's go ahead and take a look. We showed you the launcher already. Now, this launcher is not the stock launcher, even though it looks like it. It's based on the stock launcher, but it's not. Let's go ahead and look at some settings. If we come in here, the first thing that you're going to notice is I've got my uh, really cool little quick power menu up here where I can turn on and off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and sound. That's not there on stock Android. It's something that the Cyanogen mod team has cooked in. Let's go into settings, open that up. Now, everything here looks pretty much the same. Let's check down here really fast so you can see. This is in fact Android 4.0.3, and we are running 3.0.8 Cyanogen mod as our kernel. Our mod version is 9.0.0 RC0 GN Kang. All kinds of fun there, build number for those of you who want to know, is IML74K. Let's go back really quick and look at some stuff that isn't the same. So like I said, everything else in here, pretty much the same until we get into this. Let's go into Trebuchet first and foremost. Trebuchet is Cyanogen Mod's custom launcher. It lets you do a bunch of stuff that you can't do in the regular launcher. So kind of cool. Copyright 2012, which is kind of cool because it was written in the future apparently. But that was the launcher that we're running. And it's also the launcher that's going to come stock with Cyanogen Mod 9. Go into home screen here, and we can set all kinds of cool things. Home screens, how many do you want? Do you want one? Do you want seven? I'm kind of happy with the stock five, so we'll leave it there. If you use less home screens, set it to a lower number. If you use more, set it to a higher number. You have that flexibility with the Trebuchet launcher. We'll cancel that. Now, as a side note, Trebuchet is not available in the market. You must have Android 4.0.3 to run it, uh, at least in the current iteration, based on the research I've done. So if you want to head to the market and just download and install this, can't do that just yet. Maybe in the future, but not just yet. Default home screen. Now, since you can have lots of home screens, which one do you want to be the home screen? The default one that it uh, 
goes back to when you hit the home button. Well, you can set that from one to five, because I've only got five right now. You could go further up to seven if you had seven screens, but right there in the middle is where I like it. That way I have an equal number on both sides. Search bar, you can get rid of that persistent search bar with just a checkbox. Very simple, very nice. You can resize any widget. This is a carryover from older Cyanogen mods, which are really kind of cool. You can, well, resize any widget. If you've got a widget that's taking up too much space, it's taking up, say, 4x1, and it really only needs 3x1, now you can do that simply by enabling that. It is turned off by default, but head here, check that. You're done. Scroll wallpaper, you can either scroll the wallpaper when scrolling the home screens or not. If you turn that off, you're gonna get a little bit better performance, but you're not gonna be able to have as much of a wide screen experience for your wallpapers. Some people like that, some people don't. It's up to you, and now you can change that right there in the home screen settings for trebuchet. The page indicator, you can turn that on or off, and you can have it fade out when you don't need it. I'll go back and show you that in just a minute. Let's go back to some more settings. The drawer has essentially the same types of settings was regarding the, the page indicator, so you can know how many pages you have to look at and where you are in relation to the other pages. You can also join the widgets with the apps, which is the stock behavior of the default launcher, where once you get to the end of your apps, just swiping over to the left will give you your widgets and vice versa. Let's go and look at the dock. Dock does nothing yet. Icons does nothing yet and general you can tell it to auto rotate the screen so not an awful lot we'll go ahead and look at the copyright which does nothing yet so still very obviously a work in progress things that have not been wired up or are not complete yet but it's progress and there's still a lot of cool stuff that you can do up here with the home screen and the drawer let's go back now out of the launcher and again it's called trebuchet and into the cyanogen mod settings open that up and the first thing that you're going to notice is this is uh, restyled to look very ice cream sandwich like complete with the tabs across the top that you can swipe between now you're going to notice here i've got a zero on application i'm going to have application settings in here eventually they don't have anything wired up yet but there's a placeholder there for you over on display we can tweak the automatic backlight i've got that set to on to help kind of level out the uh, the, the backlighting based on uh, the ambient light sensor you can go in and make custom changes to that and just really optimize that to however you want it i go with the default i enable it and then i hit this allow light decrease and that does everything that i need and i like it and it's great you might want something different and that's entirely up to you over on input another placeholder interface we can turn on and off the notification power widget that's this guy up here very simply the lock screen no settings yet. Performance, no settings yet. Sound, system, tablet, no settings yet. So that's, that's pretty much where we are. So it looks like there's not an awful lot done, but let's look at what, well, let's look at one more thing first, or talk about one more thing. Recently on pocketnow.com, we've told you about the new music app, and I'll come over here and show you just there's music. This is the market music app, which is not to be confused with the Android music app. They're both made by Google, but this one lets you connect to Google Music in the cloud and listen to your cloud music. Uh, lets you do a lot of that kind of stuff. The Android music app doesn't let you do that. There's no public API out there yet for developers to hook into to enable you know, third-party music players to do it, but it's still that Android Music app that comes on all the devices that, well, it really hasn't been great. In fact, it's been one of my biggest complaints about Android is there's no good music app. Cyanogen Mod is changing that. They've taken the stock Android Music app and they've added a whole bunch of cool stuff. If you missed that article, head back over to pocketnow.com and read it. It's really cool. I'd love to show that to you, but it hasn't made it into a nightly build of the uh, the source code for Cyanogen mod yet. So I can't show hands-on to you, but just know that it's coming and it's there and it's really kind of cool. And hopefully Google will open up an API so that people can listen to their Google Music from the cloud in their Android Music Player on their Android. That's just kind of a hope. So. There we go. Now, I told you that I was going to show you the, the paging. You can see down here at the bottom, I've got this little bar separating my icons from my tray. And you can see the little 
screen indicator here on the bottom that is just a nice ice cream sandwich blue that fades in and then fades out so I know where I am. So really kind of nice, uh, you know, like it quite a bit. If you don't like it, turn it off. You've got that capability now. So back to what I was saying. I've just shown you everything that's not available in Cyanogen Mod yet, or, or what's kind of stubbed out with placeholders, and there's an awful lot that's not there. What is there? Well, this is my daily driver, which is unusual for a pre-release, non-official, uh, not even a nightly build. It's just amazing. This has speed. In fact, running Quadrant, this benchmarks about 1700, 1750, which is about 200 points faster than stock. So it's a faster ROM. Second, it's a little bit smoother. Of course, it's Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0.3, so I've got some newer things. For example, if you look at uh, my talk icon down here, you'll notice it's a little bit different. It's square. There's a little bit of uh, different tweaks to the uh, the Google apps or uh, the gaps as they're sometimes called. Bluetooth works, Wi-Fi works, HSPA Plus works, the screen works, streaming works, sound works, the phone works, everything on this that I have been able to check works, which is unusual, like I was saying, for a pre-release, not ready, not fully cooked ROM. Most of the time you're going to have stuff that doesn't. You know, Your GPS, which does work by the way, uh, might not work or um, Bluetooth might not, or maybe even the phone, uh, which is really kind of frustrating for people who want to try out these, these new ROMs, but not everything is ready to go. Well, in this one, it is. You can take this, flash it on your device, and should be thoroughly pleased with it, except for the stuff that's not done yet. Like I was mentioning, this is my daily driver. I am happy running this very early release of Cyanogen Mod 9, even though it's not officially supported or not even an official build for it. I love it. It's great, and I think you will too. If you want to get this on your phone, you're going to need to OEM unlock your device. You're going to need to root your device, install a custom recovery ROM, wipe everything. By the way, when you uh, OEM unlock, that'll wipe your whole device. Just FYI, you're warned. Um, go ahead and wipe and then flash this ROM, and that's pretty much it, you're done. Uh, you do need to get the Google Apps, the GAPS package as well. It does not come with the ROM, which is traditional for Cyanogen Mod ROMs. So just keep that in mind. All of those links are gonna be available over at pocketnow.com in the article associated with this first look at Cyanogen Mod 9 for the Google Nexus, or the uh, Galaxy Nexus rather. So if you wanna see how to do that, head on over there. If you like seeing this kind of stuff, of course, give the video a big thumbs up so you and all of your friends know about that. If you have any comments or questions, leave those down at the bottom. And of course, make sure you subscribe to our video channel so you don't miss out on cool stuff like this in the future. And of course, the progress of Cyanogen Mod as it uh, gets closer and closer to release. For Pocket Now, showing off Cyanogen Mod 9 ice cream sandwich, for the Galaxy Nexus GSM, I'm Joe Levi.